Hello, this is Richard van Roost and welcome to a CG Cookie quick tip on how to use smoke obstacles. In my last tutorial I got a question about on how to use a smoke obst like uh, an object which is interacting with the smoke. So I'm gonna dedicate a quick tip on this topic. Uh, I assume you know how to set up this uh, smoke domain and such. So I'll do this really quick. Um, let's scale it up eight times and you know, let's call it domain. And make it an actual smoke domain. And let's set the division to 80 and the use the adaptive domain. Okay. Now I'm going to move up this lamp a little bit. Okay, um, now I need a smoke flow uh, object. And I'm going to use the Suzanne monkey to do this. So let's scale it up. And I want to emit smoke inside this volume. I know um, it's not a, a closed volume, but it still tends to work pretty well. If you see, you can see the, the two eyes are separated or are not uh, attached, but um, still it, it tends to work. So I'm going to make it a smoke flow object. And I want to emit from the mesh, but not from the surface, from the volume. So I'm going to set the volume factor to one. And this will make, uh, this will emit smoke from inside this mesh. Um, okay, yeah, so we can now test this by pressing Alt A and simulate. And there we go. We now have a, a smoke Suzanne. And if we, we hide the mesh, we can see it works really well. Okay. Now, um, like I did in my previous tutorial, I want to uh, keep the smoke from rising so fast. So I'm going to set the temperature difference to 0 0.01. Um, 0 0.01. And if I now simulate, it just stays there. Okay, and now we can uh, use an object to move through it and to create some cool motion. So. Um, one other thing I want to do is um, I want to st stop the smoke from emitting at frame 20 and to do this I can uh, you can use the density so I'm, I'm gonna animate this so at frame 10 I'm gonna insert a keyframe with I and at frame 20 I'm gonna set this to zero and add uh, another keyframe and you, uh, if we re-simulate this, you won't tell the difference until we move an object through this. Because when we do it without setting the density to zero, it will just re-add the smoke everywhere where the mesh is. Like, so everywhere inside this uh, Suzanne object. Uh, but now it stops adding the smoke at frame 20. So now if we move an object through it, it will work a lot better. Okay, so there you can have objects that interact with the smoke that are like static, but I'm gonna use an object that actually moves. So I'm gonna animate this thing. Let's get it down. Um, just a simple cube. Let's get it down in the Z direction. And then go to edit mode and move it to the left so that my origin stays here. Now I can move it up over here and then I just want to rotate it um, rotate it like this so first let's insert a keyframe as frame 20 uh, let's insert a rotation keyframe and at frame 80 um, rotate it down and insert another rotation keyframe so it moves like this Okay, um, if we now simulate again, nothing happens because this is just a mesh, it's doing nothing. So what we need to do is make it an obstacle and um, we want to apply a collision type to this so it's being, it's being used in the simulation. And the way to do this is not clicking collision over here but it's uh, into the smoke and then click collision. And now we have different collision types. That's the only setting you have. Uh, like I said before, you can have static objects interacting with the smoke. 
So um, when when you just have some mesh sitting there uh, with smoke blowing against it or something, uh, you would use static. I'm gonna use rigid because my it's a rigid body actually, and it's just moving. If you have more complex stuff like uh, armatures or uh, shape keys, you can use animated. And another thing to note, I think this setting is still in development because right now uh, each of these settings are the same. It doesn't matter which one you choose. So I could also choose static and it will work. But I'm gonna just choose rigid because that's the proper one for this type of object. It's moving. So yeah, if I now re-simulate, we should see some interaction. And it seems to work. All right, looking pretty cool. And uh, Suzanne is being destroyed by this object. So uh, yeah, this uh, it, it looks good to me, and it it works. There's no glitches or something. Sometimes you have smoke inside this thing or uh, weird stuff, but I think you should just. Uh, uh, you should use objects that are moving slow. If you need a really fast animation with a, a, an object moving fast through the smoke, I recommend you simulate it at a, a low spe speed and then after rendering you speed it up or you just skip uh, frames. Uh, but yeah, this is how to make objects interact with your smoke simulation. Yeah. I did it on a fairly low resolution. If you want to make it look better, you, sh you should increase the divisions and use smoke high resolution, but this will slow down your simulation. So uh, that's why I don't do it. Um, one final thing I want to show you is how to render your object, your uh, obstacle. Right now it's inside the smoke domain, so if you render it, it will um, yeah, there's something that's, that goes wrong and I will show you right now. Let's set up the camera. Let's lock the camera to view and set it up uh, real quick like this. Okay, and set up the material real quick. I suppose you know how to do this, but uh, so I'm going to do this real quick. Um, let's call it smoke and make it a domain and add the smoke texture. Type is voxel data and the domain is the domain. And map to bounds because we have an adaptive domain. And don't influence emission color, only the density and multiply. All right, F12 and we see the smoke. We also see the Suzanne mesh, so you want to disable the renderability. Render again. Okay, uh, we can see the smoke, but this object, uh, this object looks a bit awful because we have some weird shadow, some weird shading going on here. And the reason for this is uh, you can see that the line is about here where the where it intersects with the domain. So the reason for this is that the domain is considered uh, to be an, an object, a volume in this case by Blender. But still, it's a volume, so light is being um, occluded by the domain. And to make it work, you should go into this object, uh, give it a material. Okay, let's disable the specular. And you want to go into the shadow and make it receive transparent shadows, because this is transparent. It's uh, yeah, completely transparent in this case, because there's no smoke over here. So if you now render, you can see it looks like it should. And another great thing of this receive transparent is that you can see the smoke shadow. So if I move this light over here, you should cast some shadow onto this plane. So let's see. Yeah, you can see now we have shadow. Uh, from the smoke and it works. It's like transparent shadows. It's pretty cool and Yeah, this is the proper way to uh, to have objects moving inside your smoke and stuff so uh, yeah, you want to 
go into the material and enable receive transparent. All right, that's it. Um, I, uh, I hope you learned something from this. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask and I will see you next time.